I'm Ashy, and today I'm going to teach you how to crochet this Michigan Wolverines logo. So Michigan was really good this season. They finished the regular season undefeated. Um, I'm a Nebraska fan. We did not fare so well and haven't for a few years, but here's to the future. Here's hoping. So these little um, crochet motifs, I've done a whole series of different logos, and these are great because you can add them to the end of a scarf pattern or into a beanie pattern or use them in a blanket, piece together a bunch of squares, or as a coaster or potholder or lots of different options for them. So let me teach you how to make this. So what you're going to need to make the crocheted Michigan Wolverines logo is first the pattern, either the written pattern or the chart like this, which is what I use. I find it easier, but both are available. Just go down to the post in the description from at Crafty with Ashy and toward the bottom it has the whole written pattern in the blog post and then there's a link to this chart. And then you'll need a size H 5.0 millimeter crochet hook. And if you want your pattern to be looser or larger, use a bigger hook. If you want it to be a tighter, smaller scale pattern, use a smaller hook. You'll need scissors and oops, a yarn needle. If you want to use a yarn needle to weave in the ends, if not, you can use your crochet hook. And then you'll need your colors. So I just have two yarns here that I had in my stash. Um, so I have the dark blue for the background and then I don't have the yellow color that is kind of that golden color for the M part. I don't have it. So I'm just gonna use this gold like tan color. But if you're looking for the color for the logo, um, I do suggest using I love this yarn. It's my favorite acrylic yarn for sure. And use the color, um, I think it was called Sunburst is what I saw, that would have been a really good option for this logo. So I'm just going to get these kind of started unraveling, unwrapping a little bit. And this one. And I'm just going to cut off the end. This is from my stash. I have no idea what this yarn is. This one I do know is I love this yarn. Um, this one I don't know what it is. Now we're going to start the pattern. So when you're crocheting off a chart like this, you start at the bottom right. If you're left-handed, you would start at the opposite end. So just flip where, where you're starting. But I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start at the bottom right. And then this is all single crochets. So we need to do our chain first. And so you do the number of single crochets and then just add one for a turning chain. So I'm gonna do 20, chain 20 for my foundation chain. Okay. And then I'm gonna turn and I'm gonna do 19 single crochets. So I'm gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then in each chain across and I should end up with 19 as long as I don't miss any or put two in any spot in the chain. Eighteen, nineteen. Okay, now I'm gonna turn and do, that was row one, now I'm gonna do row two. So know that all of your even numbers, two, four, six, so on, will be worked from left to right. All of your odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, will be worked from right to left. So I'm gonna turn and do row two now. And do 19 single crochets. Um, I like to work over my starting tail, so I kind of just pull that up when I turn and put it along the top edge of my work and then work over it. And if I just hold it next to the top edge, so I'm going under it when I'm inserting my hook, and then when I'm yarning over after I pulled through, I'm over it. And that hides that tail so that I don't have to go in and weave it in later, which for me is very convenient because weaving in ends is not the most fun thing to do. It's not my favorite. 
Um, and for this kind of color block pattern that we're doing, we're going to be carrying yarn along with us and we have to work over it when we're carrying the yellow and doing these blue stitches, we have to work over that yarn. So this is the same technique that we'll use for that. So might as well just do it for this part too and practice. Okay. Now for row three, we're gonna be working from right to left again. And this is where we start doing our color changes. So I'm gonna turn, oh, and I didn't mention, when I do single crochet, when I turn, I don't do a chain at all. I just pull my loop just a little bit looser and then go straight in with my first single crochet. And I find I get more even edges that way. So I'm gonna do two, let me back up. So looking at row three, we have two, of the dark color and then we're going to have five of the light color so we're going to change colors there and let me show you how to change the colors so you're going to start by doing your first single crochet just like normal now the second single crochet we're going to start it just like normal with insert hook yarn over and pull through but instead of finishing that single crochet with that color i'm going to take the next color and loop that through to finish that single crochet. And then I just need to pull the blue yarn, the, the first yarn, yarn A, to make that loop that I dropped the same tension as the rest of the project. And then I'm gonna put those yarns now that are left that I'm not actually crocheting with. So the tail, from attaching the gold and this blue yarn that's still attached to the to the ball because I'm going to be switching back and forth that's going to be carried along with us so I just set those basically right against the stitch and I work over them and create my five single crochets in this color so I do my first four exactly just single crochets and then on the fifth one I start it the same as normal. I pick up the blue and finish the stitch with the blue. And then I just switch. I increase that tension for the bottom working yarn of the gold and continue working now over those yarns with blue and do five single crochets in blue. Then once I get to the fifth, same thing, I switch to yarn B color and then flip flop. And then I do five single crochets. One, two, three, four. And on the fifth, I'm switching to the blue. So yarn over and pull through those two with the blue. And then I'm finishing off this row with two single crochets in blue. Okay, so there's the first row of our color changing. So we had two blue, five gold, five blue, five gold, and then two blue. Now I'm going to turn, and when I turn, I turn my work just like normal, just like turning a page in a book, and continue to carry the gold yarn along with me. Okay, so, and I'm working row four, so left to right, I'm gonna do two blues, and I just loop that gold yarn around and make sure it's over my hook, and do my first single crochet, and then I wanna make sure that I like the tension of that gold because I'm about to switch to it and then after I start making the stitches I can't change that tension for the working over part of it. So start my second 
single crochet in blue, but finish it with the gold. Flip flop the yarns. And I'm doing the exact same thing on this as I did on the last time. So five, 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 five. No, five, 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 two. <laughs> anyway, you'll get the picture. So on the fifth, switching to the blue. Five in blue. On the fifth, after I yarn over and pull through, I yarn over with the opposite color and pull through the last two. And then finish off the row with two blue single crochets again. And then we're going to turn. And one thing to note when you're doing color changing, you'll see that your yarn that you're working with from the balls gets twisted because you're constantly dropping and picking up in the same direction. So you can just periodically untwist that if it starts to create funny tension. Okay, so just untwist it, then put your hook back in and continue. And then you probably will need to do that a couple times during the project, but that's kind of the easiest way that I've found to deal with that. Okay, now that was row four. We're gonna work five, which is right to left again. And this is similar, except that we need to remember to grab this one in the opposite color. So start with two of blue. Make sure my tension's good on that gold, because I'm gonna switch to it. Five gold. Change colors. Two blue, changing colors on the second one. On the one, you're gonna do the same thing as all the other color changes. So you're gonna start that single crochet and then it's gonna feel real weird weird because you didn't even do a whole single crochet with that color, but just go ahead and switch back to the blue. And I promise it works. It's better than any other way to change the colors there. I've tried various ways just to make sure, um, but it definitely works the best and looks the best. All right, so row six is worked from left to right again. And we're gonna start with three blue single crochets instead of two. Switching on the third to gold. And then three gold. two blue, three gold, two blue, Three gold, three blue. Okay, and 
and then I'm just going to continue following the chart all the way up and I'll show you how to finish off the color changing part and then finish off the project. So we'll pick it back up once I'm to row 13. All right, here we are on row 13 and I'm going to start this row exactly the same as I was doing all of the other ones and get through these color changes. So I have four gold, switch to blue, seven blue, This pattern's nice because it is symmetrical, so you don't have to actually think necessarily about the rights and lefts because it's the same no matter which direction you're going. But if you're doing a different pattern that's not symmetrical, you definitely do need to think about it. So I recommend just getting in the habit, getting in the practice of thinking about it and following it right and left. Okay, so I just did my last color change. I'm gonna finish off the row in blue and then I'm gonna turn exactly like I have been doing the whole time. And I'm gonna work row 14, working over this gold yarn. So there's no color changes in this row. So I'm just gonna hold that yarn against the fabric and work this whole row over the gold yarn. And then I'll cut it. And that way I don't have to weave in and end later when I cut it, it'll already be secure because I worked an entire row over it and I did a turn here too. So it's plenty secure by just doing that. If you want to just cut it after you do the color change, leaving a tail and then weave in those, you know, three, four, six inches, however long you normally like to do your tails, then you can do that. I just prefer to not have to go back and weave in the ends after. So this way I'll only have the very final end to weave in when I'm completely done. So now I'm just gonna do my final row, leaving this yarn out, and then I'll cut them both at, after I finish this last row. So just gonna leave that and do my final 19 single crochets in blue to finish off the border. I kind of bordered with two blues all the way around it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my scissors and cut the gold yarn. I'm gonna kind of pull it a little bit tight and just cut it there right next to the fabric because again, that one is already woven in. And then this one, I'm gonna leave my kind of standard tail. And that was very long, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna pull up one more loop and pull it all the way through to create that knot. And then I'm gonna take that tail and use my yarn needle to weave in that tail. And I have looked to see if there is a specific way that ends should be woven in or not. And the answer is no. Um, there are people with opinions on how it should be done, but there really is not like a standard way of weaving in ends as long as it's secure. So some people just randomly go through their, you know, up and down the stitches some people go down one way and then go to another row and go back. And that's what I like to do, um, especially with the yarn needle. It's very, very easy to do that. If you, you like to use a crochet hook, um, I used to do it that way. And I definitely was much more random when I did that. But with the yarn needle, it makes it very easy to do down one and then turn and go back the other way. And then just trim off the excess. 
And there you have the Michigan Wolverines logo. And if you want it to be perfectly square, you can definitely block it, just get it wet, straighten it out, flatten it out into the shape that you want and let it dry. And it will, it'll stay that shape if you do that. There it is. So again, here is that Michigan Wolverines pattern. I like these projects, they're super fast and simple and are a great way to personalize an item for yourself or for somebody that you love. Um, if you have a different favorite team, let me know down in the comments and maybe in the future I can make a logo for that team. If you liked this video, if you learned something, please like it and hit subscribe. Uh, check out my channel for a bunch more information lots and lots of informational content and uh, some more patterns as well. Have an awesome day.